Today I'm going to speak about archetypal inflation in a post-truth world. And I'm about to get very personal. Charles Eisenstein just released his new essay, The Conspiracy Myth, which inspired me and made me realize again how closely associated his thinking and my thinking are. Of course, uh, I've done two podcasts with Charles over the years and they've, especially the first one, came to define the work I've been doing with Reclaim Me in the Throne for many years. Because so many men had been inspired by that podcast that they came to work with us and have their three-month initiation and breakthrough. So Charles Eisenstein has been very much part of this inquiry that I've had. You know, I'm really happy that Charles's voice is getting out there more. And I'm also super stoked that my buddies David Fuller and Alexander Biner in Rebel Wisdom are gaining momentum with their message in Rebel Wisdom. And um, I've had a great deal of success with my men's work for the last almost six years by now. And I haven't yet get out, gotten out to that sort of critical mass. So that's why I've been pacing back and forth, speaking to my partner, Michelle. It's like, how can I reach more people? Like, how can I reach thousands of people? I, I want to help. I, I know this landscape. Let me help. <laughs> it's been strong. And as I've been watching some of the latest output from Charles Eisenstein and David, and David in conversation with Charles, and David in conversation with Peter Lindbergh, something dawned on me the importance of self-reflection, of sharing vulnerability as a leader in this space. Because as we are in this liminal space, then all of the parts of us that we have repressed because they were painful are about to come back up. That is what happens in the liminal, just like it happens in our dreams. If you're not comfortable with your power, maybe you're being chased by a mass murderer in your dreams. If you're not comfortable with your sexuality, maybe you're having wet dreams and you wake up feeling very ashamed. So this is what's happening in liminal space, is that our shadow parts are being emerged. It's crucial right now. For the leaders of this conversation, I'm one of them, maybe you're one of them, maybe you want to be one of them, to really investigate our motives and to be very clear on the way that we were hurt as children. Because in my experience, having done this work for, uh, for about a decade now, and really plunging into this territory, all of our identity structures have been created in, a, in an attempt to bypass having to be in direct relationship with what's painful. So we have chosen to repress parts of our being, as I just said, maybe it's power, maybe it's sexuality, maybe it's something else. And because we have repressed those things, by virtue of the principle of projection that Carl Jung has uh, spoken so much about, we come to point to that in the external world and we judge it and we see it as evil. This happens in us all, in everyone. And in a post-truth world, in liminal space, what will tend to happen is that if, if we don't take the invitation to fall into the purpose of the underworld, which is to die and be reborn, a tomb and a womb, what we will do is we will press on even stronger with our numbing narratives, with our justifications. And why do we do that? Because we're closer to the place that we would hate to see in ourselves because it's too devastating. It's too painful to remember all of the things that happened when I was little, the way I was abused, the way I was bullied, the way I was abandoned. For me personally, I'm gonna get personal here, 
the most core pain that I have in me is this fear of not belonging. That somehow I don't have any people that are my people in this world. And uh, I never really found it easy to belong to groups. And so then in 2012, when I got glandular fever and I was plunged into a five-year underworld journey with, with chronic fatigue, a lot of that time I was very lonely. I'd be alone in my flat. I was a single man at the time, a bachelor. And um, nobody really came. Most of my friends didn't show up. It was, it was a painful time. And, well, I learned something about the nature of friendship. That's one thing. But I also faced what I'm truly afraid of. And it was as I did that, that I could get to a place of creating Reclaim the Inner Throne. But yet, as I've been pacing back and forth with Michelle saying, I want more people to listen, I want more people to listen, I paused and I checked with myself. Is this only about service? Or is there still some part of me that wants to belong by getting attention from others? And you see what will happen with leaders of this conversation right now, of the sense-making conversation, what is actually going on in the world. And this is something that David and Peter Lindbergh spoke to so beautifully in a recent uh, Rebel Wisdom video. Um, and Charles Eisenstein has been speaking to similar themes. Is, is, is that our egos can, can sort of latch on to dynamics of the conversation. And you could, I'm no judge of exactly what's happening with a man like Brian Rosenlund in real right now, but it certainly looks like he's enjoying the attention he's getting a whole lot. And by the way that I understand it in, in his past vulnerable sharings about his past, he has had struggles with worthiness, which pretty much everyone in the West does. It's a, it's a virulent disease of the mind and the, and the psychological, spiritual soul of who we are in the West. Almost none of us feel like we belong. And so here we are in a world where there is no authority on truth anymore. And the more spectacular, the more sensationalist you are in weaving narratives of reality of what's happening in the world, the more attention I'm going to get, see? And so instead of being deeply committed to the truth, I'd rather, if I were to be pursuing, if I were to be pursuing the strategy that's designed to cover up my pain, I would simply be pushing the narrative that gets me more attention. Because committing to truth is painful, by definition. Because then I need to expose all of the shit that lives inside of me. I mean, do you see many leaders do this? Of say, I was wrong, I fucked up. It's because I was, I'm wounded in this way, and this is why. I've seen one leader do that, much to his credit. Andrew Cohen did that in a beautiful documentary series, How I Created a Cult or something like that. I was impressed by that, to see him just own his shadow. And uh, he deserves to have a second chance based on that, even though he fucked up in a major way. So then, the leaders of the conversation, why are they saying what they're saying? Is it because they're pursuing truth in a way that requires their own discomfort and sacrifice? Maybe. I think Jordan Peterson did that, whether you like him or not. And what you will find with a person like Jordan Peterson is that everyone who has repressed their power and their agency by the physics of projection we'll look at Jordan Peterson and point to him as the evil one. Given that in this liminal space, the invitation is to be, to die and be reborn. 
That's the whole purpose. As Tolkien described it so eloquently with Gandalf dying in the underworld in the mines of Moria as Gandalf the Grey, so he could be reborn as Gandalf the White. That is the purpose of the underworld. And if this liminal moment, this underworld journey, the COVID-19 moment, simply has the effect of you and I clamping down even more strongly on our pre-existing belief systems and narratives, we're fucking up. We're fucking up because we're down here. Evolution itself has put us into this process. I believe this with all my heart and soul so that we can do our shadow work, so that we can reclaim our exiles, be it our power, be it our vulnerability, our hopelessness, our shame, our fear of rejection that I've had very strong in my life. And instead, what we do rather than die is we get archetypally inflated. Because we're so close to being exposed and revealed through the fragmentation of our psyche that's being exposed in the underworld. So now we need to compensate and we borrow po power from the archetypal and we huff and we puff and now we come to uh, inhabit some kind of messianic complex and other people may project it onto us. And this is why it's so crucial, which is why I've been so inspired by what Rebel Wisdom has done and Charles Eisenstein has done in conversation with Rebel Wisdom, is being in this ongoing real-time inquiry about where are my motivations coming from? What is giving life to my words and my thoughts is it my intention for service and transformation or is it my intention here to keep repressing the parts that I don't want to look at this is the great revelation the great reckoning the great shadow unearthing in mythological terms, not in religious terms, but it is the apocalypse, it's the unveiling of what's been hidden. It's not necessarily the end of the world. Actually, it could be if leaders don't do this work. But that's why I'm saying this right now. As a leader in this space, I'm swearing that I'm going to do everything that I can to keep inquiring into my motives when I pace back and forth and want you guys to listen to me because I understand the liminal and because I understand what's possible here am I doing it to serve or am I doing it to plug the parts of the whole of fear of rejection and fear of abandonment that I still haven't plugged entirely and the more energy and the more exposure that I get the more that risk will happen and I'm getting a lot more attention lately and so I just want to put this out there as accountability. I'm keeping track of it and I want you to keep track of it in your life as well. Don't just push narratives lazily because they're convenient. Anything that's convenient right now is probably a lie. So let's take the inconvenient path. And to reveal ourselves fully to ourselves and to others and from that place we can rise as kings of a new world, so to speak, and um, ensure the continued thriving and prosperity of humanity. Are you with me on this? I hope so. I believe it's important. And I'm very grateful that you chose to take this time to listen to me yet again. Have a kick-ass day. Go out there and give your gifts. Be the leader that you're supposed to be or be the student that you're supposed to be just show up with integrity with curiosity curiosity and with humility i think we can get through this and um, i'm gonna do my part have a great day thank you so much for being interested in this radical and quite unusual content i've spent more than a decade researching this territory and many of my perspectives may be quite new to you, 
but I know that you're seeing and watching this right now because you're someone pursuing truth and a less than mainstream kind of truth, but a truth that feels truly good to you deep in your bones, something that you can trust. I'm not going to help you find truth in all parts of life, but I'm certainly going to help you with what I know about. And if that's something that you want more of, please share this video with someone you care about and also subscribe to this channel. That's a great support to me and to the work we do with uh, Reclaim Your Throne. And if you want to have notifications every time there's a new video, please also remember to press the little bell. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Have a, an ass-kicking day and I look forward to seeing you next time.